both yourself and Fianna Fáil have been involved in an utterly despicable and dishonest charade around the issue of uh, rents on an issue that uh, affects the well-being of tens of thousands of people affected by the rental uh, crisis. Uh, 10,000 precisely uh, renters who between June and September of this year uh, have contacted uh, go government agencies in crisis situations over plans by landlords to increase their rent on the spurious basis of relatives moving in or plans to sell the house or some other uh, unjustified uh, rent uh, increase. Uh, and literally the uh, roof over the head of these tens of thousands of people is in question and this government and Fianna Fáil engage in an elaborate and quite frankly despicable charade where they pretend to be representing the interests of tenants when in fact what they are arguing about is how, about how much profit landlords can make out of the misery and anxiety and insecurity of tenants. Because that is what you were arguing about. This government fought tooth and nail against bus workers who asked for a 4% annual uh, increase. Or against workers who want pay increases to be brought back to the level of 2009. But somehow you think it is acceptable that landlords who have already achieved rents in excess of 2009 levels should have a 4% increase every year for the next three years, bringing already unaffordable uh, levels of rent uh, into the outer stratosphere as far as ordinary workers are concerned and the wages uh, that they earn. I mean, let me just give you some examples, uh, Minister. In South Dublin, uh, the average rent, according to Dunleary Ratdown, for a three bedroom house is €2,280 Euro a month. Uh, the average wage for a worker is about €34,000 a year. Net take home pay per month makes it about €2,400. So already, uh, to, uh, for an average worker, about 90% of their income is required to pay for a three-bedroom house in uh, Dunleary Ratdown. And you think that it is acceptable to increase that by 4% next year, by 8% uh, the year after, and then up to 12%. How are they supposed to pay it, when at the very same time you resist their demands for pay increases and say they are unaffordable? You are doing nothing, I put it to you, Minister, and Fianna Fáil, who agree with you that this is acceptable, except catering and pandering to the greed, the insatiable greed of landlords, of vulture funds, uh, of uh, financial and uh, property speculators, and care nothing about the tens of thousands of people who literally fear for the roof over their head and the heads of their children and family. It is utterly shameful. Thank you, Deputy. Tarnished again that our primary goal is to protect tenants and ensure that there is supply in the rental market. Now what you seem to want a government to do is to run the private uh, rental market completely. Now let me make it clear that this, uh, you should acknowledge that this is actually a dramatic intervention, it's never been done before, um, it, with, the, with the goal of protecting uh, tenants. That you've never had this sort of intervention in order to provide certainty for the very people that you're speaking about. That's the goal of this policy, to provide certainty for those people uh, who are renting. You have 150,000 people who are renting between Dublin and Cork, and this is the beginning of a strategy to give greater certainty to them. And that will then be continued with the work of the uh, Tenancy Board and the Housing Authority and local authorities. So the goal is to provide certainty. And in terms of the examples that you quote, clearly the way of dealing with that situation is to have greater supply. We have to increase supply. That is the way to deal with the, the housing situation. We have to increase supply. We are seeking through uh, these amendments at report stage to give greater certainty uh, to those who rent. It's never been done before. This is the first time that it's been done, and it's the right thing to do, given the pressures that are out there in the rental market. So we want to move ahead today 
and finalise uh, those amendments so that we can do that. But clearly there's a lot of other actions that have to be taken within the housing strategy uh, to increase supply. And I've already listed the range of areas uh, that uh, the Minister is uh, leading on to ensure uh, that we see that greater supply. You saw the ESRI report yesterday and what it said. The ESRI report warned against inappropriate intervention because what would it do? It would destroy supply. We do not want to destroy the supply for the very people you are talking about. We want to ensure that there is a constant supply and that it is stable. And the actions that the Minister is taking after a great deal of consultation and discussion are the actions that will lead to that situation. You have to take action. We accept that we have to take action, but it has to be targeted, it has to be efficient, and it has to work. And we believe, and the Minister believes, having done a lot of consultation uh, very carefully with all of the stakeholders across the system, that this is the right approach so that we end up protecting tenants and maintaining the very supply that is needed for renters now or in the future. Minister, the only certainty you're offering is the certainty of unaffordable rents and more evictions and the certainty of exorbitant extortionate profits for landlords. That's the only certainty. And if you think that's a comfort to people who currently can't pay existing rents, uh, that somehow a 12% increase over the next uh, three years is going to provide them with some sort of comfort or some kind of certainty uh, it is going to uh, offer them nothing but the prospect of eviction and of complete unaffordability uh, for the ba most basic thing that a family and a human being need, which is a roof over their head. And I put it to you again, how the hell is somebody on average earnings, or God forbid on less than average earnings, in South Dublin supposed to pay even the existing average rent levels of €2,280 a month for a three bedroom. How are they supposed to pay it? And you think it is then acceptable to jack that up by 12%. It's not possible. And you see, uh, in conclusion, Count Corley, you are trying to square a circle that cannot be squared. And that is to get people who are interested only in making profit to provide housing for people with income that is not able to match market prices. Thank the you. only way that can be done, as we've told you again and again and again, is for the state to provide local authority, low-cost housing. Thank That's you. what's needed, Minister, not pandering to landlords' greed. Honest, uh, minute to conclude, please. You know, your solution will create further problems for the very tenants that you're speaking about. Because the whole supply is going to dry up if we were to follow the uh, suggestions that you're putting forward here today. They simply won't work. You're presenting them as if there's some sort of magical solution. They are not. They are not. They will drive people out of the market. The very people that who seek, the very people who seek rented accommodation will not be able to get it and the supply will be a huge problem. What we're doing is targeted, it's careful, it's targeted, it's a careful initiative. And the goal is, as I've said already, is to ensure that there will be a stable uh, investment environment to protect the existing stock, because you have to protect the existing stock of rental accommodation. There's no point uh, taking actions that won't protect the existing stock, because if you don't protect that, people will be leaving accommodation because it will be sold and they won't be able to stay in it. Thank you so so much. We, we simply have to deal with that issue, and these are targeted interventions to deal with the situation. But of course there are other initiatives in, in, including affordable housing that are absolutely key to solving the housing situation and the money has been allocated to ensure that that happens. We have a report today already that 18,000 houses are being, have been built this year which is ahead of all the predictions that were out there. Thank you, Tony.